So we are going to uh, linear approximation here. So uh, basically, what linear approximation? Okay, you see the uh, the equation here. This is a, 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 just a normal tangent line. Okay? It's nothing different, nothing new. But we are going to use it for approximating some value, okay? or we are going to appro approximating some value that. This A is our, how to say that, um, our reference, okay, our reference. So if we look at, maybe I would just, just get you the, another graph here, just to say that this is the, uh, okay. so this A, this, this tangent line at A is our reference. What this reference do is, when we have something nearby A, we can say that, well, if you see the pixels, it seems that this one, you cannot differentiate, you cannot really see difference, the blue and red, it seems like a linear, both of them. So we can approximate the blue one here with the red one, because it seems it's, it's, it's nearby, it's, it's same, it has the same, the same slope. So that's what it does. We approximate, something in the curve, blue curve, with the red tangent line, okay? Okay, now, for example, for example, if we want to, uh, to take on this, okay. of course, you can type in your calculator, but what your calculator does, but what what is what is, what is doing actually? If we refer to the calculus, we need to, to compute this with our calculus reference. Okay? So first, first, when we have the square root of something, we need to guess what kind of function that. Well, probably it's the square root of x. Let's say square root of x. Okay. So let's say guessing that the functions will be uh, square root of x. Okay. And then we can guess that it will be easier if this is just 9. Let's just remove the 0, 6. 
So if this is square root of 9, this will be 3, right? So let's say if x is 9, or let's say, let me write directly, this is what a means. Okay, so a is 9. So that means that f a is 3. Okay. So now we have f prime x okay, from the f of x. And this is uh, 1 over 2 squared of x. And it's, it's good for you to keep in mind that whenever we have a square root of something, it will, be, it will have this structure, okay? whatever the square root is, and multiply with its chain rule. Okay, and then in our case here, x is 9.06. So if you want to calculate the square root of 9.06, we are going to plug in this into the equations, and this will approximate 3 plus, let me write here, the f prime at x equal a or equal 9. This will equal 2. 1 over 6. So this will be 1 over 6. And then this will be the difference uh, 9.06 minus 9. So we are going to have so this probably around 3.01. Okay, you can check with your calculator whether this decimals Correct. Okay. So let me let me give you a clear process. Okay. So first, define the function. Second, maybe find the f prime x. Third. Remember that the approximations is f of a plus f prime a and then x minus a. Choose a, evaluate. Actually, can you, you can choose a at the beginning, but um, any, anyway, it's the same result. Well, you need to remember for the linear approximation, I, I'm showing you that if this is uh, this uh, x is greater than a, it will be a, a positive sign here. But we can also maybe try 8.99 or maybe 8.8. .8. .8. So the 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 x minus a maybe it will be a negative. So we will have negative sign. Okay. So I hope you you get that that logic. Okay. So whenever you approximate, it's something that it should be less than. Maybe you need to minus the this statement here, okay, the x minus a. We call this method is linearization. So we force the curve to have a linear. Okay. So we approximate the curve with a linear equation. Okay. And of course, it works only when x is x is near a x should be near a. You could try with maybe different number, like maybe really far away from a. Maybe a, a is 9. Maybe if we take a, um, maybe 12. Well, it would be, the, the, the result is not good. The result will be not good.
And this also can be used to detect the error. Can be also used to detect the error. So you have the real value. Suppose you have the real value, and then you want to check the approximation has some error. You can subtract both of them, and you can see how many errors they have. And you can check like percentage of an error. The more less you get for the error, the best approximation you have. Okay, maybe more examples. Uh, just, I think one, one, just one more example to see whether you have uh, clear uh, process. Uh, use linear approximation to estimate I'll give you just a question uh, one over. Okay, you can try for a while, maybe giving you a couple of minutes to try, and then we can move to the uh, next section. Anyway, since we completely chapter three, perhaps there will be another quiz uh, to start. If not this week, and maybe next week. So I will give you like longer days to complete, maybe six to seven days for uh, the duration for for the quiz. Maybe after I give the explanation on the homework and uh, another additional uh, exercise, and then after that, then another quiz. And while doing so, we are moving to chapter four. And if we finish chapter four, then there will, there will be a midterm. So I expected the midterm is around, if not second week, November, maybe third week. Second week or third week, but I think I think second week. I think second week.
Okay, so we define the functions every time we see a question on linear approximations like this one. To, uh, the question is asking some computations that we need to define a function first. So there will be some questions referred to linear approximation. One type of questions will be asking directly. They give you a function, they give you some A, and you just try to mix up with the formulation, the tangent line equation. And you basically you just need to plug in all the things. Okay. The second question will be about how to compute some decimals and then you can approximate with some curve. Okay. So that means the curve we need to define first. What kind of curve that can define is something with power of 4. I think we can just say the function is x with power of 4. That will be a very logic reason. Right? So we can just write down that the functions, uh, this is probably the functions can be x with power of four. We can try to differentiate this, right? And then since it's 1.999, so it's also logic reason, logical, with, with logic reason, it's also obvious that it could be two to make it easy to, to compute. So we can take a as two, because 2 with power of 4 is 16, easy to, to calculate. So we expect that, because it's less than 2, the answer should be about near 16, but less than 16, OK? That's, that's how, it, how it's going. <laughs> so if you get the answer is it's higher than 16, that is not logic, right? Okay. So, so choosing a equal 2, so we get fa is 16 and f prime a is four, uh, two, eight, four is what, 32, right? Okay. Now we put on the, let me, yeah, let me just write um, this equations. So we are going to have f of a is 16 plus 32, and x is 1.999 minus 2, right? So this will be 0 0.001, right? But minus, so I multiply with 32, this will be two zero 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 three zero zero zero. So zero 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 three two. So this will be sixteen minus zero point zero zero three two. Or we could say that this will result in eight six nine fifteen, right? So it's, it's the answer that we are expecting. Uh, it's nearby 16, but less than 16. So it's almost 16. Well, if, if the question is in exam, then another approach is you can just multiply this four times. That's, uh, if, we are, if, if you don't mind uh, sometimes wasting on sure. calculating this. <laughs> okay. Any questions? Which, this one? Yes. Yeah, too many zeros. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Okay, similarly. The second example here, we first define the functions. So the best way to define, well, maybe it's just 1 over x. Okay. 
and you can guess the a probably four one so one over four is easy to compute is 0 0.25 right so we can define this one over x and we are going to find the derivative this will be negative one over x squared right okay so a is four so f a is one over four f prime a is negative one over 16. so f of x approximate f of a plus f from a x minus a so one over four plus or negative one over 16 x is 4.002 minus 4 so this will be 0 0.002 we can cancel this with this so it's 8 so 1 over 4 minus 1 over 8000 so this will be how to compute this uh, 8,000 uh, 4, 2,000 minus minus 1 so 1,999 nine, nine. I think just just stop here I think it's okay you don't need to compute at the end <laughs> okay, I, 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 I stop there wherever I want <laughs> it's okay. okay if you write this in your exam Because the question is not asking what kind of answer you should be writing, right? So any answer should be fine, as long as it's correct. Or you could try, uh, if you have 2,000, it should be 0 0.25. So it should be 0 0.24 something, right? Should be. Any questions? Any questions for this one? Uh, if the question is asking the linearization, it means that it's just asking this as a function. As a function. So you could write uh, with some a, and then you could tell the function. Usually linearization should uh, they should have fixed the A. So that you will have will have a function. So if the question is asking the linearization, it, it means that it's asking the function this function the tangent line function. Uh, another uh, writings is using we call the differentials. Okay, uh, this is basically similar, but we are just writing the delta y and delta x as dx and dy, and we call them as differentials. Differentials will start by Taking the definitions of f prime x is dy dx, right? dy over dx. And we could certainly see that we can write that dy is f prime x dx. Now, usually this is what we call the differentials.
where dx is independent variable and dy is dependent variable. Okay. And how the the meaning of this is explained in this geometric uh, terms. So when we have the one here, okay, this will be the differences between the tangent and the uh, point S. Okay. So we could we could also elaborate with the, this triangle. Yeah, this triangle. So we could see that the, the the delta y, the differences on the curve, okay, we could write uh, as f x plus delta x minus f of x. So dy representing the amount of the tangent line rises. Okay. So we could write, remember the linearization we have in the first part. Uh, let me. Uh. Plus f prime a, x minus a. This is our linearization as usual. We could write this in terms of differentials. This becomes a f a plus the, the dx is approximating the f of a and plus dy. But this term is actually the same thing. Same thing. We just say that the x is taking from some a and then plus with some change in x. Okay? And then this dy is basically came from here. So f prime f prime x dx, and dx we define as something that changes between a and x. This is just additional information. And the the the, uh, the explanations on how to solve the, uh, some problems is the same. It's just it's just uh, in writing the difference in the writing. Okay, so that's the end of the, this section. The next chapter is the application of differentiation. So chapter four, uh, the application for derivative is how to sketch a graph with calculus. So that's the goal in chapter four. So we are using all the derivatives, all the differentiation, uh, to sketch a graph, sketch a curve.
Okay, I think we can move on or if you still want to write the notes. I think we can move to the, the next one. So I will begin. This is chapter four. Application of differentiation. Okay, to, to start, let me just draw some some random curve. And then let me start this with uh, defining all the points. So a and then b and then c and then we have here this is d and e but i think in maybe junior high or maybe high school we we have known the definition of the maximum value minimum value right so if you see a curve if we, and I think I already mentioned in, uh, I think several weeks ago, that when we have the slope, the slope, for example, this A to B, the slope is positive, and B to C slope is negative, when we see that differences, when we see the change, we know that at this point B, there will be some slope that is zero, right? and we call this B when it changed from positive to negative, is called this is called the maximum value, right? So we, we can call this is maximum max, this is also max, okay? And we call this minimum value, this is minimum value, okay? But for now in this session, we are going to define what kind of maximum value we have, what kind of minimum value we have. So we need to differentiate. Because we have two maximum, okay? So there will be two maximum value. The highest one for all the regions, we call that the global maximum. Okay. It's a global maximum. So maybe to make it clear, this is the global maximum. And the other one will be the local maximum. And what of the what 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 will be the minimum value? We, we, we clearly see two, but actually if we set the interval just as this interval, then this will be the global mean. This will be the global mean. The A. It can be the global minimum. Okay. So it depends on the interval. What kind of interval we have? Is it open interval? Is it closed interval like this? So we set up like uh, in the fixed interval. If if we set in the fixed interval, then you need to make to, to also consider the endpoints, how maximum or how minimum they will have. Okay. And the other one will be just local. Okay. Now, I said earlier that. We might have slope equal zero here and maybe here and maybe here, but how about this? It's not zero, right? It's not differentiable. Remember, when we see a sharp corner like this, this is not differentiable. But we still say that this is a local minimum. We still <coughs> say this is a local minimum, although the slope is not zero. Okay. So that that will be given theorem later on. So let me write some definition for the uh, maximum minimum value. Let me just copy paste all here. So this will be the absolute minimums or global you could say. So we could say global or absolute maximum. The same thing. Okay. Same thing.
So we need to define this B. Okay. Is it like open interval for all x? It can be uh, true. Make it bigger. And then we have the local one. So the local one, just consider the value nearby, you'd say this nearby C, okay, maybe nearby this, this area here, or maybe here, or maybe here, just a local, local, local here. That is just saying that in local, if you have maximum, that the point of that C will be greater than the nearby map of X. And same thing with the minimum, it will be less or equal with the function. Uh, some theorem on this absolute maximum minimum is the extreme value theorem. Okay. So it says that if we have a closed interval, okay, let's say from A to B, the function is continuous, uh, F will attain this absolute maximum and absolute minimum value at some number. So it should, should have those two values. Okay. So maybe it can be in between, or maybe it will be in the end point. That's, that can be true. Okay. So whenever you, you, you are asked to find the uh, maximum or minimum value, and you have to close interval, let's say A, B, it's, uh, aside from looking for something in between, you can try the end point, okay. try the end point. For the maximum or minimum value. And because we, we, we talked before about the slope, so let me give you one theorem to, to make it this uh, easier to, to be approached. So one theorem says that if F has local maximum or minimum at some point C and F prime C exists, then those derivative or those slope at C will be zero. Okay? As we mentioned earlier, but this is true when it exists. If not exists, like we have a sharp corner, then we we are we, we don't uh, conclude that it's zero, right? But we still say it will be a, a minimum or maximum value. I and mean, we see a sharp corner. Okay. Okay, and then, uh, wait, let me check. Okay. And then, from that theorem, we can conclude that this C is what we call the critical number. So critical number is when the F prime C equals zero or F prime C does not exist. So what does it mean? So F prime C equals zero, I think you could, you could uh, see from, uh, let, me, let me draw here. Like maybe if we take that as our uh, functions, then at this point here, this is our critical number. Because when we have this, this is equal zero, right? The second definition 
is when we have, um, let's say, well, let's say the, the absolute value x. Okay. For the absolute value x, or any sharp corner graphs, at this graph, at this sharp corner, we know that the f prime c, that, that, or f prime, is not exist. Because it's not differentiable, so it's not, it doesn't exist, okay? So both of them, both of them, we call this point a critical number. So if you have a function, uh, maybe polynomial function, the best way to check the critical number is just derive n equal to zero and find the x, find the point, find the critical point or critical number. And the, the Fermat's theorem, we can rephrase that as this, okay? This is just, just a summary, okay? You can write in your notes with whatever words you can say as you understand these uh, words, okay? You can write with, 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 with many, many words. Or maybe you could just write with the conclusions. It's still okay. Because the conclusion is the, this, this critical number, okay? This is the conclusion that will be defining whether it has a local max, local mean, okay? And if it is having a local max, local mean, then at that point C, C is critical number. We just rephrase this word, okay, just to make sure that we are on uh, the same page, okay, for all these definitions. Okay, and uh, okay. <coughs> I think to use all these uh, definitions, like the finding critical number, we are going to have a look at it after we deal with more here to come, so we can have a more uh, comprehend uh, material. Because if we have this, this, we just, like, we have a function, then what we need is, we need this to derive equal to zero, find x. That's supposed to be in this uh, first session. Okay. Maybe after the second or third session, we are going to look more global, uh, how to sketch a graph. Okay. We will take uh, a break, and we are going to continue from here. Okay, maybe before we continue, is there any questions about this part? I think it's supposed to be okay, right? Like you want to find the critical point that there's a critical point that does not exist, otherwise it's not equal to, or do we get something undefined? Yeah, something undefined. So you would get something on. Yeah, something undefined. Okay. Now the next thing, after we know the maximum, minimum value, the uh, next thing is um, we call this the mean value theorem. And this theorem will connect the, uh, the one that we get in the last section, the linear approximation, the tangent line, with the certain consequences of maximum and minimum. So let me let me give you uh, what that means. Okay. So first, to understand the mean value theorem, let me give you the the Rolle's theorem first. Okay. 
the Rolle's theorem, it says that if f is continuous, so this should be continuous first. If it doesn't continue, then it, it, won't, it won't work. Okay. If f continues on some, some certain closed interval a, b, and f is differentiable on this open interval, and do you know why we have open? Because in n point, we are not sure whether how it uh, well, well, whether it's, it's differentiable or not. Because it's, it's, it, it, it is like you have a graph. And you just end with that. And we are not sure what will happen if it's like this or it's like maybe going down. So we just uh, taking just an open interval, okay? And then f of a equal f of b. So if f of a equal f of b, then there will be a number c in a b such that, that the slope or the derivative of c is zero. This is just saying that whenever we have a kind of functions that, uh, well, we have um, maybe like this. Okay, so this is a. This is b. We have this c as at this point here. This is c. This is also c. Then this f prime c is equal to zero. But this is for really general theorem, okay? Really general theorem. We could also have, um, if you have this, okay? And this is A, this is B. We can also have C at the between A, B that the f prime c is zero. From this role theorem, we move on to the more uh, broad theorem that we call the mean value theorem. The requirements the same, should be continue, should be differentiable. But we have this uh, formulation that f prime c is f b minus f of a over b minus a. Or we can write like this. And remember that this is actually what we already learned before. It's actually similar to what, what our tangent line equation, our linear approximation. We deal with the, this is actually linear equation. So we could write this as FB minus F of, uh, let me just write equal F of A plus f prime c, b minus a. Remember that the f prime, it's supposed to be the slope. Okay, this one is the slope. Or, uh, or slope of tangent, slope of tangent. And the right side here is the second, the second line. Now, if we would like to draw the illustrations, we are going to have, let me draw in the right side here. So we have uh, so what does the formula means okay, in terms of the geometric uh, definition is we are going to have 
the slope of this secant, the blue line, will be the same as this red line here. So this will be A and B for, for the blue line. So this will be A, this will be B, and this blue line is the secant. is uh, f of b minus f of a over b minus a, okay? The second one, blue one. And it says that, the theorem says that we are going to have, in between of this, it should have this red curve that the slope is the same, and the slope is the same. So we are going to have um, the slope, let's say this is, uh, well, we could write the m a b is f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a, and we have here we could write this is c and let's say c one and this is c two. Okay. okay, and we could say that this is equal. To, so f prime c1 is equal to m a b and equal to f prime c2. Okay. Well, we could also write with another curve. Maybe we could just write like this. And we, we know that if we connect this second line, the a b, we are going to have somewhere in between the slope that is the same with those a, a b. Okay. So let's say this is uh, c. So this is f prime c. So we'll see that it's also having the same uh, same slope. This is, this is also the same slope. That is the, the mean value here. Okay. So whenever we have uh, F continuous, F differentiable, there will be something in between A and B, we call the C, that has the same slope, okay, has the same slope, slope of tangent equal to slope of secant, Now, what's the implication of this mean value theorem? Okay. What's the implication? So from this part, I think let me take this, go through here. Okay. So from this, let the A less C less B, okay? Which means that the C is in between A and B. Let, let we settle the conditions, okay? So because, because A is less than the number B, so B minus A is positive value, right? It's positive. So this part of our equation, always positive. So let me let me write again in the bottom here. So when we have this b minus a, since b minus a is always positive, the one that makes these equations to be negative is this f prime c, okay? Because a b is any number. Uh, we, can, we can set it any number, but since b minus a is always positive, the one that can make this equation, the whole equation negative or positive, it depends on this f prime c. Okay. So, consequences. First, if f prime c is positive, then f of b is greater than f of a. 
we call this the f or the function is increasing. Okay, if f is increasing. And then perhaps the f prime c is less than zero, which we are going to have that f of b perhaps is less than f of a. And we say that this f is decreasing. And also, the last case, if it is uh, equal to 0. Which means that f of b is equal to f of a. This is, we call the stationary point. Some call the stationary, some call the steady point, and it's the same. Make it clear. We can illustrate with just a simple curve. Let's say we have that. So we will have this point here, all is positive, right? The slope. So we can say that F prime is positive. And this will be f prime equals zero and the last part here is the negative slope which is f prime is less than zero and we know that if we have this then the point here at the stationary point or at the slope zero or f prime equals zero is called the maximum value it changed from positive to negative if it changed from negative to positive it's called the minimum value where we can say local maximum or local minimum Okay, so this mean value theorem is a, a bridge, bridging, a bridging from uh, the maximum minimum value to uh, how to how to observe a graph, okay? how to observe a graph, how how to how to tell the graph whether it's increasing, decreasing. Okay?
Okay, maybe any questions first? Any questions? I'm skipping some little words on the textbook because I don't think that would be necessary. We are going to just go through and set some examples later. Okay. Okay. Now, if we have uh, just just uh, to make sure that we we have uh, we know what what it means. Okay. So let's say we have this. Let's say we maybe here. Okay. And take this as a b. And this is A, uh, this is B. Okay, we have this is functions, okay? We have this f of x. Notice that we have the slope changing. Let me write the slope changing. So it's changed from, let's say that is the slope that is changing. So I'll just give you some illustrations all through. So we know that F prime is positive. But, but from what we have here, we know it's increasing, but how fast the increasing is. We see that almost horizontal and then almost vertical. So we see that it's F prime, or we could say the the positive f prime is increasing okay and if you have this other um, graph let's say it's going to be like this and the same a and b It's also increasing, right? It's also increasing. So we could say that this is also increasing. So F prime also positive. So positive F prime. Now, it's like almost vertical here, but it's going to be horizontal. So from some, something positive, it's going to be somewhere maybe almost zero. Which means that the f prime, the positive f prime, is decreasing. Okay, this is the idea on the second derivative actually. Okay. The positive f prime is decreasing. Okay, so perhaps if we continue graphing the, the curve, okay, maybe if we see from the left curve, maybe we'll be going through here like that. And if the right side, maybe if we see after this B, maybe it's going down like this. So we have the, the first one is supposed to be like this. The second one is supposed to be maybe like this. Okay. We call this, this is concave upwards. This is concave 
downwards. We call this a concave. So concave upwards is when you have this uh, conditions. Okay. You see that we are going to have, uh, well, you could say, every time you see a curve like U like that, you could always say that this is going to upwards. It's facing upwards. It's facing up upwards. So the curve is facing up first like that. And it's facing downwards. So we could say the concavity, okay, let, me, let me write some definition first for concave upwards. So if f double prime x is positive on interval, the gray, the, 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 uh, then the graph is concave upwards. <laughs> And you have, if you have the second derivative less than zero, this will be uh, concave downwards. Perhaps we could see some simple graph from, let's say, just x squared, y equal x squared. Okay, let's say we have y equal x squared. Okay, okay. now from the slope, we see that it's going to have the negative slope here and a positive slope here. Right? And then if we want to make the graph of the first derivative, I will make it with the same y-axis here we could see that if we derive this y prime is 2x so we have a line equations that is 2x with the slope 2 so maybe we have maybe a line that goes through like this And we know that this is the negative, right? The negative, this is positive. And this is uh, y prime equal to x. 
And if we deal with the second derivative, we derive one more time. It's, it's, the result is two. Okay. And as we mentioned, what to deal with the positive, positive second derivative, it goes to concave upwards, which is this. And if we draw the second derivative, we'll just align equations at y equal 2. So we could write down the line equations. And we could just say that this is our second derivative. Okay, let me uh, let me copy some picture first. Okay, let me give you a, another curve. Okay, this is the definition, but I think we already write down the definition. So let me give you the, another curve okay, to see how it goes. And I would like to focus on this curve here. Maximum, it doesn't exist here, the difference, the, 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 it's not differentiable. Minimum, also maximum. This is critical numbers. This is critical number because it's zero, right? But it's not maximum or minimum. Okay. Let, let me just write that to, to, to keep in mind. So we, we also have that, that conditions, okay? So this will be f prime is zero, but it is not max or min, okay? Because we now have the concavity, then it will be it will relate to the second derivative, okay? So this will be uh, maximum, so local max, because f prime is not differentiable. This is also the same, 
and we have here this is the local mean and i think everything is clear this is also a local max and everything clear okay so the blue se section that i wrote is from our first section which we differentiate the what is the maximum value what is the minimum value okay now you'll see that there is a section that C, D, C, U, C, D. It's concave downwards, concave upwards. Okay, from the, we can just look from the, um, from the shape. Okay? So if you have this, we say it's it's facing down like that, and it's facing up, and it's facing down, facing up like. That. So we could say that it's concave downwards, upwards, and it changed up until the uh, this point Q here. Okay? But what interesting in this graph, okay, if you see. There is changing, there is a change from the concave downwards to concave upwards. Let's say the first one here is at B. So if we take some time to imagine what is happening in B. Well, we could see that this is, if we take some time to, 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 to see the slope, well, it goes down, right? It goes down here, goes down, goes down. So you see that from zero, it's going to less and less negative. But after this B, it's going a little bit increase. Okay? Can you see that? Yes, yes, yes. And after this, this is actually a little bit increasing here, right? So this point B, this point here, is what we call the inflection inflection point or point of inflection. Okay. This is similar to what we have in our situations, this in these situations, okay. There is some slight change, okay? There is some slight change. And also, when we have this C, okay? We have B and we have C. We also have that point of inflection. So it goes increasing, but after C, it's kind of decreasing, okay? but still positive, still positive value, right? So we call also this is an inflection point. So let me write some definition of inflection point. Okay. If uh, if F is continuous and curve change changes from let me write just cd to cu or cu to cd this is referred to concave upwards and downwards okay then uh, at some point at at a point let's say the point p Then at point P, this is what we call the inflection point. This inflection point in turns we are going to have that we can look for the, uh, let's say the second derivative test. So if F double prime C is zero and F double prime 
C is positive. Then we could say that this is local minimum at C. And, the, and otherwise we have, so we could also tell whether it is maximum or minimum with this second derivative. Especially for reviewing chapter three, reviewing chapter three, and especially your homework, some of your homework, and then after that we we can review all of this and maybe from just a summarize from the beginning to after all that here the concavity test. Before that, uh, any questions? Before we move to the last uh, session, just uh, feedback. <laughs> any questions? I prepare feedbacks. It's a little bit, a little bit long, but um, I think let me just erase one question. <laughs> Too long. finish off your writings. Okay, I think we can move to feedback session. Okay, let me check. Not this one. Uh, this is about related trades. So I hope still remember how to. And we are going to review also this part uh, tomorrow. Only one question. I already erased another one. I prepared two, but I think it's too long, so I just erased one. Yeah, one question. Yeah, you try your best. Okay. I prepared two questions, but I think too long and no time. So, uh, yeah. How many exams left you for the midterm? Physics? Already, right? Why person replies smiling on physics? You want to throw up? Okay, we'll start. We'll start in very soon. Okay, please use your student ID. Okay. I, I have only one question. Let's get back. <laughs> so get ready. Okay, let's start. I'm not sure the time is enough. Like around 4 minutes, 30 seconds. 
I give you the picture. Okay, I have to give you the picture. Hopefully it helps. The original question doesn't have picture. <laughs> I hope it helps, the picture. So someone play type, okay? And this is actually the, the, the string of type, okay? String of type, the, the Y, the string of type, and this is the type. It has 50 meter height, the height, and it has speed okay, horizontally. So the speed horizontally, so it should be the x horizontal. Okay. The speed, and then it's asking the rate of the angle. So we have the angle between y and x, between the uh, the string of the height and the horizontal axis. It's asking uh, when is the, so the kite is supposed to be going down. It's going to be uh, from the 50 meter, it's going down. And it's asking uh, the decreasing rate of the angle. Okay. So of course, if it's asking about angle, so you should look for trigonometric relation. That's the, the formulation you need to think. Of course, you need to um, relate to the constant 50 for the formula. And then you need to calculate the rate when the string is 100. Of course, this 100 should be at the end of your calculation. So you need to calculate the formulation first and then plug in 100 at the end. So related rates is always have the same pattern. You first, if, if it's not having a picture, you draw a picture, you, you see which variable, name the variable, okay, after naming the variable, find a formula that relate all the conditions, relate all the rates. Okay. And of course, you need to define your objective, what you need to find from those variables. I think in, in this case, we are going to find the theta, d theta over d theta. That's the one that we are going to get. After we have the formula derived with respect to t, and then plug in 100 at the end. That should be the process. Okay. Well, we can review this tomorrow. Okay, We can review this tomorrow. You can try your best now. Okay, eight seconds. Okay, you can just random, random, choose random. <laughs> okay. Who's the first place? Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, I will check again. I think 
Maybe wrong answer. Maybe wrong answer. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, uh, we will see tomorrow, okay? Okay, if you finish, then that will be the end of our class today. Oh no, it's correct answer. The correct answer, yeah. Correct answer. One over one hundred, yeah. <laughs>